you pee it out. You just pee it out. That's what the science says about allulose. You don't use it, you just pee it out. Allulose. It's taking over the keto world, it's taking over the alternative sweetener world, and it's pretty darn awesome stuff, and the science does back it up. Now, molecularly, it's super, super similar to sugar, very similar to sugar, and chemically, it's what's called a monosaccharide, which is basically what sugar is too. So, for all intents and purposes, the body kind of treats it like a sugar, except it doesn't utilize it. So you find it in all kinds of keto treats. A lot of my favorite keto treats end up having allulose. So I figured, why don't I do a video where I really investigate the science behind allulose and quite frankly, I couldn't find a whole lot of negative stuff. It's all very positive. Like I said, my favorite keto treats have allulose. If you wanna check one out, check out Magic Spoon down below. They're that keto cereal, super awesome stuff. And they're one of the first foods that I used that had allulose and I was just like turned onto it because this tastes like sugar, it tastes like cereal. And I've always been a cereal freak. And when I went keto, I wasn't able to have cereal unless I went off of it or had it as a cheat meal. So highly recommend you check them out. All kinds of flavors. My favorite's the peanut butter flavor, which is just a game changer for keto. So it is sweetened with allulose, so it's relevant to this video. But let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about what's going on in your body and why allulose is kind of a zero food. So let's talk about the caloric value and how it's excreted for a second. We have to get down to the down and dirty with excretion for a little bit too. Okay, this study was published in the journal Metabolism. What they did is they gave test subjects either glucose or allulose, and then they measured their exhaled gases. Now, this is what scientists do when they're looking at oxidation rates. So if they give a subject glucose, they can measure off of their exhaled gases how much they oxidized. So they already know what is roughly oxidized with glucose, so they did that. And then they gave subjects allulose, and they found that almost nothing was exhaled. There was almost no change in what was oxidized, implying that this allulose stuff doesn't even really get utilized by the body. There was only a 10% increase in like, or change in their exhaled gases, suggesting that there was only 0.4 calories per gram of allulose, practically nothing. But what was really interesting is in the world of artificial sweeteners or natural sweeteners or any alternative sweeteners, you usually see a fermentation in the gut, in the small intestine, which leads to gastric upset. There was no fermenting of allulose in the gut. So that means the gastric upset that normally accompanies alternative sweeteners wasn't there because normally the starches don't break down and that's why it's an alternative sweetener because they're playing up on the digestive system and not breaking down. Well, with the case of allulose, 70% of it is excreted in the urine, hence the intro that I used for this video. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So how is it metabolized then? Or is it metabolized? Well, here's what's wild. When we start looking at that, we realize if it's excreted in the urine, we probably lack the enzymes to actually utilize it. And that's what's happening. So it's not even getting a chance to absorb, it's just getting excreted. But let's break it down even more. The journal Foods published something pretty cool. They simulated gastric juices in a research setting, okay? And they put allulose in these gastric juices that they simulated. And they found that 97% of the allulose remained after sitting in gastric juices for one hour, suggesting that 97% of the allulose doesn't even get absorbed when it's going through the digestion process. Okay, well, let's expand. Well, researchers did. They took a look at what are called rat hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are liver cells, but in this case, they cultured them from rats. And they exposed either fructose, which is sugar that comes from fruit, or allulose to these hepatocytes. Okay, well after 240 minutes, stick with me, I know this is weird. After 240 minutes, there was 50% of the fructose left along with the hepatocytes, but there was 95% of the allulose left. What that means is even at the liver level, we're not utilizing the allulose. It just doesn't take up, it doesn't absorb. It just, like I said, you pee it out. Where I've always kind of been turned off by alternative sweeteners is their potential negative impact on the microbiome, especially the artificial sweeteners that are shown to have a serious negative impact on your gut biome. Okay, it turns out that allulose may have a positive impact. Here's some more research to back it up. The journal Nutrients published a study, this one looking at mice, I know, discredit me all you want, but just hear me, hear me out. They gave mice a high fat diet, and then they gave them 5% allulose. 
and they found that these mice ended up having a significant decrease in their weight gain, which was probably a result of just their body increasing energy expenditure in an effort to try to digest allulose because it's working hard to, to break it down, but it can't. So it might put you in a net caloric loss, which is cool. But even better, there was an increase in the abundance of short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are what feed the enterocytes. They feed the cells that line your gut. That is so critical when it comes down to A, ketone production if you're doing a low carb diet, but B, just giving your microbiome true fuel, giving it what it needs to be healthy and balanced. So you combine this with some of the good healthy fibers and starches that are in a lot of keto products, you actually might give yourself a really good overall gut food. Just, I mean, you look at, again, like Magic Spoon, for instance, they're using some of these fibers that are already good for the gut. You combine that with allulose, which has a short chain fatty acid effect, one could argue that it's actually quite good for prebiotic effect and just growing good gut bacteria. But again, that's purely hypothetical. Where things get exceptionally intriguing though is the potential use of allulose along with carbohydrates. So I'm gonna give you a hypothetical scenario in just a second after I break down this research. I think you're gonna find this intriguing. So what the journal of Nutritional Sciences and Vitaminology published was that if subjects consume 75 grams of maltodextrin, which if you do that, that would be very odd. That's a very high glycemic carbohydrate, higher glycemic than sugar. But anyway, the point was 75 grams of maltodextrin along with either two and a half, five, or seven and a half grams of allulose. Well, the groups that had the five gram or the seven and a half gram dose of allulose had a significant reduction in blood sugar at 30, 60, and 90 minutes after eating. So what that tells us, or at least implies, is that if you consume allulose along with carbohydrates, it could make it so those carbohydrates have less of an effect. That those carbohydrates don't absorb as much that those carbohydrates don't affect your blood sugar as much. Is that an awesome cheat meal mitigation strategy? Okay, so you have a bowl of like keto cereal or you have some kind of other keto treat with allulose along with your delicious cheat meal and maybe, just maybe, it won't have as much of a negative effect. Well, when you understand the mechanism of action in the body, it makes perfect sense. Because allulose is so molecularly similar to glucose, to sugar, it occupies the transporters that would normally transport sugar. So envision this, I'll take GLUT2 and GLUT5 for instance, which normally would transport some glucose and fructose. Well, even though allulose doesn't actually ride the transporter all the way in per se, it still occupies. So it's like you're going to get on a bus, that bus is gonna go somewhere, but then someone just decides to come in and sit in the seat right before you. So you can't get on the bus, but it just sits there and the bus never goes anywhere. That's basically what's happening with allulose. So that is really interesting stuff and scientists are looking at it more and more and feeding us more data as allulose becomes just a really tremendous alternative sweetener. So again, with anything, you take it with a grain of salt or in this case, a grain of sugar because we don't know exactly what is going on, why it's not absorbing, but it's excreting and it's not causing negative impacts, at least as far as the science shows. So. I say try it out. It seems to be pretty net neutral whether you're keto or not, and it has positive effects potentially with blood sugar too. So anyhow, make sure you check out a bunch of these foods that have allulose in it. Don't forget to check out Magic Spoon down below as they're an awesome supporter of this channel too. I'll see you tomorrow.